Grace to you and peace, and welcome to uh, this online worship service provided by First Lutheran Church of Albemarle uh, on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost, and also on this uh, day in which we do celebrate Independence Day uh, in our country. Uh, we welcome all those who are able to watch uh, this worship service with us today. Uh, as a reminder, we do have an order of worship uh, that is available as a PDF file uh, in the notes section of the video. Uh, you can download that, use that, or you can just worship uh, without that too. We're just glad that you're able to join us uh, today. I do invite you now to uh, take a breath and, and uh, say a prayer uh, as we begin uh, our worship with our prelude. <laughs> Worship service continues with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our worship service continues with our first two readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from Genesis chapter 24. Laban, Rebekah's brother, received a visitor who said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given up him flocks and herds, server, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when he was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make me successful the way I am going, I am standing here by the spring of water, let the young woman, woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out to her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. And I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I said, then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's king, kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away to their sister Rebekah and her nurse along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Harai Roy and was settled in the Negeb. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field and looked up, and he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 7. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, 
I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Thank you, Dr. Carl. And now I want to invite the children to come on over to your screens and let's go ahead and sit down and have a children's message, okay? I want to tell you about Paul, uh, the person that we just heard um, Dr. Carl read from is a famous letter that Paul wrote that's in our Bible. Uh, he wrote a lot uh, of books in our Bible. Very famous and important uh, Christian. But Paul had a problem. And maybe you heard that uh, this morning when you heard Dr. Carl read that. Paul said, you know, I don't understand myself. The things that I know I'm supposed to do, I don't do. And the things I know that I'm not supposed to do, sometimes I do. Have you ever felt that way? I think most of us have. If even Paul, a famous Christian, can feel that way, surely all of us have felt that way at times. Sometimes we really want to do the right thing and we, we don't. And other times we do things that we know we're not supposed to do. So what do we do? Well, Paul, after saying, I don't understand this, I don't know what to do, he finally says, but thanks be to God through Jesus who helps me. Jesus helps us to do the right thing, and when we don't do the right thing, Jesus also forgives us and helps us to try again. And so I think that's a really good reminder uh, for all of us today. Just to remember that even if Paul didn't always do the right thing, we shouldn't feel so bad when we make mistakes, uh, but that we can also turn to Jesus and ask him to help us uh, to do the right thing uh, in our life. So whatever age we are, uh, that's a good reminder to us that we can ask Jesus for help uh, to forgive us when we do wrong and to help us uh, to do right. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus, who forgives us and who helps us. And when we are tempted to do wrong things, help us to remember to ask Jesus for help. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for coming up. And now we have some special music from Dr. Carl. Dreams as true. 
true and high as mine. My country skies are bluer than the ocean, and sunlight beams on clover leaf and pine. But other lands have sunlight too and clover, and skies are everywhere as blue as mine. So hear my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for their land and for mine. This is my prayer, O God of all earth's kingdoms. Your kingdom come on earth as your will be done. O God, be lifted up till all shall serve you and hearts united learn to live as one. So hear my prayer, O God of all the nations, myself I give you, let your will be done. Thank you, Carl. A beautiful song, beautiful prayer uh, for all of us uh, to lift up uh, this holiday weekend. And now the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd about John the Baptist, saying, but, what to what, but to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do give thanks to you for your words uh, to us uh, this day. And as we reflect on your words, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable and pleasing to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, last week, um, if you tuned in, um, I began a two-part series uh, looking at the whole topic of Christian freedom. Uh, we're celebrating our freedom as Americans uh, this weekend, and so it seems like a timely uh, time to, uh, to, to preach on this, uh, this topic. You know, our freedom uh, as Americans is no small thing. Uh, we are blessed in this country to be able to worship our Lord and live out our faith without fear of persecution. Uh, that's not true in all countries around the world. Uh, we can do this because of the sacrifice made by uh, many of our fellow Americans, really in every generation, who are willing to give up some of their freedom in order to defend uh, ours. But there is another type of freedom that's important to remember. 
and that is our freedom as Christians, the freedom of the gospel itself. And so last week we looked at one dimension of this freedom, uh, the idea that we have been freed from sin by Jesus. Uh, we, we've been given a whole healed, put together life right now with more and more life on the way. Uh, we are now free from sin and free to love God and to love and serve our neighbor as ourself. And it's true, of course, we are freed from sin. But the question is, as I shared with the kids, why does it always feel that way? And I don't know about you, but I have to admit that I don't think I made it through this whole week sin free. You know, I might be freed from sin, but I still find sin uh, nipping at my heels. Or as Martin Luther is reported to have said, uh, the old Adam within us might have been drowned in baptism, but he sure did turn out to be a good swimmer. Sin keeps knocking at the door, doesn't it? And nipping at our heels. Which is why I find that passage from Paul's letter to the Romans uh, that forms our second reading today uh, so comforting and, and helpful. You know, shortly after Paul writes that we are freed from sin, he writes, and yet I don't understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. A bit of a tongue twister, but it sure does speak some truth, doesn't it? Uh, because Paul just honestly describes, you know, what life is really like uh, for us. We can will what is right, but we don't always do it. The spirit is willing, as Jesus himself said, but the flesh is weak. So what do we do? In other words, Paul says, who will rescue us from this body of death? Who will free us from this captivity to sin? And of course, there is only one answer to that, and it is uh, Jesus. Wretched man that I am, Paul says, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Jesus frees us from sin. We want to think about how he does that this morning or whenever you're watching this. Uh, but before we get to how he does that, I want to think for a moment of some other burdens that we bear. Because Jesus doesn't just free us from our sin. He offers to free us from our burdens, of which sin is but one. You know, it's true that some of our burdens are the result of our sin. Our inability to do the right thing can kind of come back to haunt us with consequences. Some burdens are our own faults, but other burdens aren't really our fault at all. You know, whether it's physical illness or financial struggles or an accident, a natural disaster or this pandemic, you know, these are not our fault but they can still burden us greatly. And then there are other burdens that we bear that may be caused uh, by others. We might be victims of a crime or of a hurtful word or might even be bullied ourselves. And then there are the burdens that are brought on by love. You know, because we love others, their burdens can become ours. You know, family and friends who are hurting, when they hurt, we hurt. But it can be people that we don't even know, who face trials in this world, who face injustice and discrimination and hunger and loneliness and on and on. You know, there are a lot of people, even in our own country, who don't enjoy the same freedom that we do. That burdens us, or it should burden us. You know, the burdens of this world become our burdens because we want to be like Jesus. And because we hear the call in Scripture to bear one another's burdens and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Sometimes these burdens can become overwhelming. They can seem too much to bear. Which brings us to this wonderful invitation in our Gospel reading today from Jesus. And this invitation to all of us who admit that we can't rescue ourselves from sin an invitation to all of us who are burdened by trying to live a God-pleasing life or even a meaningful life on our own. And an invitation to all who feel burdened for all the reasons 
that I've just named. To all who bear these burdens, Jesus offers these blessed words of invitation. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Beautiful invitation. One of my favorite passages in all of Scripture, which I believe is an invitation to true Christian freedom. It's an invitation to all who are weary, to all who are carrying heavy burdens, and who among us is not. And the way to be free of that burden, to find that rest for our souls that we all long for, is to take Jesus' yoke upon us, to learn from him, for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Now a yoke, when you think about it, isn't really a typical image of freedom. It's really quite the opposite, isn't it? You know, a yoke, that wooden cross piece that is fastened over the necks of two animals, uh, would almost seem to be the opposite uh, of freedom. But Jesus knows that he can't simply free us from our sin without giving us a new direction in life. Otherwise, we'd just become enslaved to sin all over again. And so he invites us to exchange one yoke for another. And he invites us to exchange the yoke of sin for the yoke that connects us to Jesus, the yoke that paradoxically offers us true freedom. And this yoke, Jesus tells us, is an easy one, which literally from the Greek means it's a well-fitting one. It's built just for us. The yoke that Jesus offers is perfect for us because Jesus doesn't want us to be something that we're not. He wants us to be who we truly are, and he helps us to do that by offering to be yoked with us, to come alongside us, to pull with us, to offer himself so that we can learn from him and follow him and serve him and lose ourselves in him. And by losing ourselves in him, find our true selves. You ever had one of those moments in your life when you, you knew, you just knew that at that moment you were doing exactly what you were supposed to be doing? Exactly what God wanted you to be doing? You may have been working very hard at the time, but it didn't feel that way. You had this peace about you. Your soul was at rest because you knew you were doing what God created you to do, at least in that moment. You knew it. Isn't that a wonderful feeling? And isn't that what Jesus wants for all of us? What he offers to us today. When we come to him and are yoked with him, our burden becomes light because it's the right burden. Our weariness goes away because we're given a well-fitting yoke and we find rest for our souls. And you know, Jesus knows how tired we can get from trying to figure this life out on our own. We just can't do it, not on our own. And so he invites all who are weary to come to him and take this yoke upon us and to learn from him, to follow him and to find the rest that we seek. And the rest from trying to get it all perfect. The rest from the mistakes and the imperfections, you know, otherwise known as sin, that weigh all of us down. You know, in the middle of us, this Independence Day weekend, Jesus comes to offer us this really special, amazing path to freedom, which is himself. He invites us today to come to him, exchange one yoke for another. And the yoke that he offers is promised to be easy, to be well-fitting, the burden will be light. Yes, it's still a yoke. We cannot do whatever we want or we'll end up captive to sin all over again, but in, instead now we have this freedom to do what our Lord wants, true freedom, being able to choose the good, being able to follow Christ, to serve him with glad and generous hearts, being able to do whatever he asks of us as his joyful servants. That is the true freedom of a Christian, the freedom for which Jesus laid down his life. May our freedom as Americans, which we celebrate 
and give thanks for this weekend, always remind us of our freedom as Christians. And may we always be faithful in using both of these freedoms for the glory of God. Amen. This day, let us join together in confessing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church around the globe. Where Christians are beginning to assemble for worship again, protect them from viral infection. Where Christians continue to worship with print and screen, grant them steadfastness in your word. Strengthen those believers who doubt your goodness. Bless bishops, pastors, deacons, and all committee members as they serve our congregations in this difficult time. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation as we celebrate Independence Day. We give thanks to you for all those who protect and defend us and provide for us the gift of liberty. Inspire us to use our freedom honorably. Make us mindful of the heritage our forebears have given to this land and guide us to be faithful in our stewardship of all the resources you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and suffering. Console the fearful, feed the hungry, house the homeless, shelter the runaways, heal the many who are newly afflicted with this coronavirus, and guide researchers in discovering a vaccine. Visit the sick whom we name here now, whether out loud or in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for infants and young children, that they be carefully tended. We pray for teens, that they keep patience through this contagion. We pray for school boards, that they find solutions for the fall semester. We pray for the unemployed, that they find jobs. We pray for medical workers, that they remain healthy. We pray for the aged, especially those in care facilities, that they find companionship in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray finally for ourselves. Show us that the yoke of faith is easy. May we find our rest in you. Hear now our private petitions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, for the sake of him who bore the heavy yoke for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.